Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Today's topic is reproduction in flowering plants. Class 12, reproduction in flowering plants. Flowering plants means angiosperms. So, reproduction in angiosperms. Before going to the reproduction and the fertilization events, we need to know the pre-fertilization events and the structure of the flower. Pre-fertilization events. What is pre-fertilization events? Events that is taking place before the fertilization. That is before the fertilization is gametogenesis. Gametogenesis means formation of the male and the female gametes. That is formation of the male and the female gametes. Then structure of the flower. Then pollination will take place. Then only fertilization will take place. So that we need to know the structure of the flower. Typically a flower consists of four parts. That is calyx, corolla, antrecium and gynecium. The flower which has all these four parts is called a perfect flower or a complete flower that is the flower with all the four parts that is calyx, corolla, antrecium and gynecium is called a perfect flower or the complete flower and we are going to the structure of the flower structure of the flower that is here the base the structure to which all the floral parts get attached is called thalamus. This is called thalamus or receptacle. This is called receptacle. The structure to which all the floral parts are getting attached is called thalamus or receptacle. Next comes the ovary. This is the style and at the top of the style is the portion called Stigma, this is called the style and this is ovary, inside ovary what is there? Ovules are there, inside ovary ovules are there and here you can see a green leafy like structures and these are called the sepals, this is called sepal and here you can see structures like filament and at the top by lobed structures, these are called stamens. This is called filament. And this is called anther. So next comes petal, which is very beautiful. This is the petal. This is the petal. So these are the parts that is the structure to which all the floral parts attached is called thalamus or receptacle. This is the sepal that is the outermost covering of the flower. Outer world of the flower that is sepal and here comes the ovary. This portion is called style and the top of the style stigma is there and here this portion is the filament part at the top bilobe and the like structure is there and these are the petals. Here comes the structure. So Calyx. What is called calyx? All the sepals are called calyx. All the sepals, that is the green leaf structures are there. All the sepals are collectively called calyx. Right? So what is the function of the calyx? Protection. It prevents the desiccation of the flower. So protection is the function of the calyx. This is the first wall and the outermost wall. So then, then comes the corolla. What is corolla? All the petals. Petals here beautifully colored petals are there. It has fragrance. It will attract insects. So what is the function of the petals on the corolla? To attract insects. So all the petals collectively are called corolla. All the petals collectively are called corolla. Next comes the antrecium part. What is the antrecium part? Antrecium is the male reproductive part of the plant, of the flower. Male reproductive part is the antrecium. This is the male reproductive part that is with the filament and at the top a bilobed structure is called anther. This is the filament and this is the anther. This part is called stamen. This is called stamen. All the stamens collectively are called antrecium. So there comes the male reproductive part. With the filament and the anther they are called stamen. And all the stamens are called antrecium. It is the male reproductive part. Why? Because Within the anther, there are pollen sacs. That is at the top of the filament. A cluster of microsporangium is there. That is within the anther. There is, that is pollen sac. 
within the pollen sac there are pollen grains and these pollen grains will migrate and will go to the stigma this pollen grains from here it will migrate and go to the stigma and get stuck there stigma is sticky in nature so that pollen grains will get stuck there and after when the pollen grains will migrate to the stigma it will develop a like pollen tube to the downwards of the ovary okay it will develop after this pollen grains get stick into the stigma it will develop a pollen tube to the down of the ovary right so these are the male reproductive part next comes the gynoecium this is the female reproductive part that is ovary you can see ovary style and stigma are called the female reproductive parts or gynoecium ovary plus style plus stigma is otherwise known as carpel or pistil carpel or pistil so this collectively becomes the gynoecium this is the female reproductive part okay so next we will calyx and corolla together are called perianth calyx plus corolla is called perianth and calyx and corolla is also called the accessory walls of the flower accessory walls because they are protective they the function is protection so these are called the accessory walls of the flower and antherium and gynoecium are called the essential walls or the reproductive walls because they take part directly in the fertilization so antherium and gynoecium are called the reproductive or the essential walls of the flower okay next we come to the structure of the stamen that is a male reproductive part structure of the stamen stamen you can see this is the filament at the top bilobed this is anther this is filament so here one question will be there to which part this filament will be attached filament can be attached either to the thalamus either to the thalamus or it can be attached to the petal of the flower okay this filament that is anther and filament this filament can be attached either to the thalamus or to the petal of the flower so this and the majority of the flowers are dithecus dithecus there are monothecus and dithecus majority are dithecus dithecus means two lobed two lobed here you can see two lobes are there theca means lobe theca means lobe this is dithecus and if it is dithecus it is connected here it is connected with a tissue and that is called connective here at the center this is called connective okay two lobes are connected with each other with the connective tissue and one more thing this end is called the end to which it is attached to the thalamus it is called proximal end proximal end and the upper part this end is called the distal end distal end so this comes the structure of the stamen and if you are taking the transverse version you can see here like this it will be like this and two pollen sacs that is dithecus means two lobe clearly you can see two lobe this is one lobe and this is one lobe each lobe contains two pollen sacs in this lobe two pollen sacs this lobe two pollen sacs inside what is present pollen grains will present after maturity what will happen pollen grains will migrate and go to the stigma stigma this is style this is stigma then pollen tube will be developed then fertilization will take place this is the process which is happening we will be dealing later in detail okay this is a transverse version and and apart to the attachment of the anther and the filament these are of four types upon the attachment of anther to the filament these are of four types that is basi fixed adenate dorsi fixed versatile so basi fixed means look here suppose this is the anther this filament is from the base of the anther that is basi fixed filament is from the base of the anther that is basi fixed example in mustard seeds you can see it adenate adenate means if the filament is from the base to the apex it is called adenate base to the apex the ad filament is there that is called adenate water lily is an example dorsi fixed means 
it will be filament is from the back of the anther that is called dorsifixed example is sesbania sesbania flowers means sesbania is example of dorsifix sesbania you can see in the p group p family okay next is the versatile versatile means anther is long and the filament will be hanging like this anther is long means it help in the migration of pollen grains by wind distribution of pollen grains through the wind pollination takes place through wind where in this type of plant this is seen in versatile type of anther is seen in grasses that is in anemophilous flowers in anemophilous flowers you can see versatile type of anther so that what will happen these anthers are like hanging or floating so that pollen grains will migrate with the help of wind different types of pollination are there in anemophilous flowers that is in the grasses pollination takes place through wind it's very very important pollination takes place through wind in anemophilous flowers anemophilous flowers example is grasses okay so based on the attachment of the anther and the filament basifix adenate dorsifix and versatile next comes two terms staminate and pistillate flowers staminate flowers means staminate staminate flowers means flowers which bearing only the male reproductive parts which are the male reproductive parts androecium so some flowers have female reproductive parts some flowers have male reproductive parts so flowers which bear only the male reproductive parts are called staminate flowers and flowers which bear only the female reproductive parts is called pistillate flowers so which are the female reproductive parts gynecium so that type of flowers are called pistillate flowers okay so staminate and pistillate flowers so you know which type of flowers the largest pollen grain largest pollen grain sostera sostera there's a plant called sostera sostera has the longest pollen grain this can be asked in your neat exam sostera sostera is a sea grass one of the sea grass family and this has the longest pollen grain longest pollen grain has sostera plant has the longest pollen grain so this comes to the end of this session we will continue this chapter in the next video thank you